On the deck of a steamer sailing from Odessa to Sevastopol, a rather good-looking gentleman with a little round beard came up to me to smoke and said, Notice those Germans sitting near the shelter. Whenever Germans or Englishmen get together, they talk about the crops, price of wool or their personal affairs, but for some reason or other, when we Russians get together, we never discuss anything but women and abstract subjects, but especially women. This gentleman's face was familiar to me already. We had returned from abroad the evening before in the same train, and at Volochisk, when the luggage was being examined by the customs, I saw him standing with a lady, his traveling companion, before a perfect mountain of trunks and baskets filled with ladies' clothes, and I noticed how embarrassed and downcast he was when he had to pay duty on some piece of silk slippery, and his companion protested and threatened to make a complaint. Afterwards, on the way to Odessa, I saw him carrying little pies and oranges to the ladies' compartment. It was rather damp, the vessel swayed a little and the ladies had retired to their cabins. A gentleman with a little round beard sat down beside me and continued, Yes, when Russians come together, they discuss nothing but abstract subjects and women. We are so intellectual, so solemn, that we utter nothing but truth. I can discuss only questions of a lofty order. The Russian actor doesn't know how to be funny. He acts with profundity, even in force. We're just the same. When we have got to talk of truffles, we treat them only from an exalted point of view. It comes from a lack of boldness, sincerity and simplicity. We talk so often about women, I fancy, because we are dissatisfied. We take to ideal view of women, make demands out of all proportion with what reality can give us. We get something utterly different from what we want, and the result is dissatisfaction, shatters hopes and inward suffering. And if anyone is suffering, he's bound to talk of it. Doesn't bore you to go on with this conversation? No, not in the least. In that case, allow me to introduce myself, said my companion, rising from his seat a little. Ivan Samakhin, Moscow landowner of sort. You, I know very well. He sat down and went on looking at me with a genuine and friendly expression. A mediocre philosopher like Max Nordau would explain these incessant conversations about women as a form of erotic madness, or would put it down to our having been slave owners and so on. I take quite a different view of it. I repeat, we are dissatisfied because we are idealists. We want the creatures who bear us and our children to be superior to us and to everything in the world. When we are young, we adore our precise those with whom we are in love. Love and happiness with us are synonyms. Among us in Russia, marriage without love is despised. Sensuality is ridiculed and inspires repulsion. And the greatest success is enjoyed by those tales and novels in which women are beautiful, poetical and exalted. And if the Russians has been for years in ecstasies over Raphael's Madonna, or is eager for the emancipation of women, I assure you, there is no affectation about it. But the trouble is that when we have been married or been intimate with a woman for some two or three years, we begin to feel deceived and disillusioned. We pair off with others, and again disappointment, again repulsion, and in the long run we become convinced that women are lying, trivial, fussy, unfair, undeveloped, cruel. In fact, far from being superior, are immeasurably inferior to us men. In our dissatisfaction and disappointment there is nothing left for us but to grumble and talk about what we've been so cruelly deceived in. While Shamahin was talking, I noticed that the Russian language and our Russian surroundings gave him great pleasure. This was probably because he had been very homesick abroad. Though he praised the Russians and ascribed to them rare idealism, he did not disparage foreigners, and that I put down to his credit. Could be seen, too, that there was some uneasiness in his soul, that he wanted to talk more of himself than of women, and that I was in forlorn story in the nature of confession. And when we had asked for a bottle of wine and had each of us drunk a glass, this was how he did in fact begin. I remember in a novel of Weltzmann someone says, so that is the story, and someone else answers, nope, that's not the story, that's only the introduction to the story. In the same way, what I've said so far is only the introduction. What I really want to tell you is my own love story. Excuse me, I must ask you again, it won't bore you to listen? Told him it wouldn't, he went on. 